Good morning, and welcome to another lecture given by Meridian Soul School of the Highest Learning. First of all, this is a school and not a church. Neither are we associated with any religious organizations, Jehovah Witnesses, or any other denomination you have taught in the world today. Now, this school was established in the year of 1931 by Dr. Henry C. Kenley, who had a divine vision and revelation direct from Yahweh. And the charts you see pictorially illustrated are results of that divine vision and revelation. I will be explaining the name you see here. Now, Yahweh is the true and correct name by Heaven the Father, which was once laid down in the scriptures. We have Yahweh symbolized as a cloud on this chart because Yahweh symbolized himself as a cloud in many passages of your Bible. We have the cloud extending all around the edge of the chart so that everything on the chart is within the cloud. Just as everything that exists exists within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Now, in this pure spirit state, Yahweh has no descriptive shape or form in which he is the source and substance, the limits and the bounds of everything that exists. Now, when your translator has come across the true and correct name right here in the Father Yahweh, they have used and searched the English title, Lord. Yahweh taking on a superincorporeal shape and form itself, known as the word of Son, is Elohim. Now, superincorporeal means without physical flesh and blood. And in this state, Yahweh Elohim can only be seen in divine vision and revelation, as stated in Exodus 24, 9 and 10. Then when of Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and they saw the Elohim of Israel. Now remember, they saw Elohim in a divine vision and revelation. Now when your translators have come across the true and correct divine title for Yahweh in shape and form known as Elohim, they have usually inserted the English title, God. Yahweh Elohim manifested in a physical body as the Savior of the world is Yahshua the Messiah. That's written in John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word. And the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh. And in the 14th verse, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, when your translators have come across the true and correct name of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, they have usually inserted false and erroneous names, such as Jesus Christ. But remember, Yahweh in pure spirit as the Father, Yahweh in a super incorporeal shape and form known as the word of the Son is Elohim, and Yahweh manifested in a physical body as the Savior of the world is Yahshua the Messiah. Yahweh in his two manifestations but one spirit, as stated in 1 John 5 and 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Now, my investigation on your part will prove to you beyond a shadow of a doubt that the name and title we teach here are true and correct, but that the names and titles that you have taught in the world are false and erroneous. For an example, look up the letter J. It is not and never has been in any part of the Hebrew language. It did not come into existence in any language prior to the Middle Ages. Therefore, such names as Jehovah and Jesus are impossible renders by Heavenly Father true and correct name, Yahweh and His Son, Yahshua the Messiah. Our aims. The primary constitutional objectives of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the distinction of race, nationality, sex, creed, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called laws of nature and powers laden in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the set of the scriptures compared to religion, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which is once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh is from the beginning ordained that there is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved, save in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the newer state, 
Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is speak the truth. They have prayer for Dr. Miranda Gonzalez. Scripture lesson by Dr. Vanessa Collins. Scripture lesson be John, the third chapter. Good morning, good morning, class. Let us bow our heart and our mind this morning for prayer. O oh, most gracious Heavenly Father, Yahweh, we come again being ever thankful for your, your mercy and your grace during this these last days that you have foretold us of. We are thankful that you have guided us through this wilderness of our mind, that you have kept us steadfast in those things that you have proved and reproved unto us in our own conscience. We're thankful for the mercy, the grace that you have given us even when we have not been deserving of your mercy or your grace. We thank you for allowing us another opportunity to, uh, opportunity to awake with soundness of mind that no matter how, what, when, or where, where we see that it is your purpose that is being unfolded. So we ask you this morning as every morning to keep our heart and our mind stayed on you so that as you have told us that there is nothing standing in our conscience but you, the Holy Spirit, divine wisdom, knowledge, understanding. So we ask you this morning to continue to give us those things that you know we need to be able to endure until the end. These and all blessings we ask in thy son's name, Yahshua the Messiah, let us all say hallelujah. 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 Good morning. Scripture lesson for this morning is John 3rd chapter. I will be reading from the Holy Name Bible contain the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities in various manuscripts, revised by the late A.B. Trainer, the Scripture Research Association Incorporated, John 3rd chapter. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Yahshua by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from Elohim, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except Elohim be with him. Yahshua answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of Yahweh. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born again? Yahshua answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born from above. The wind bloweth where it listed, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Yahshua answered and said unto him, Art thou a leader of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, 
We speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the son of man, which was in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For Yahweh sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of Yahweh. And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and men love the darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought through Elohim. After these things came Joshua and his disciples into the land of Judea, and there he tarried with them and baptized. And John was also baptizing in Enon near to Salem, because there was much water there. And they came and were baptized. For John was not yet cast into prison. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all come to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Messiah, but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he had seen and heard, that he testified, and no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony hath certified that he is truly of Elohim. For he whom Yahweh hath sent speaketh the words of Yahweh. For Yahweh giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him, the Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of Yahweh abideth on him. John, third chapter. Hallelujah. All right, good morning, class. My name is Carla Carter. I'll be the host slash moderator for this morning and afternoon lecture. Our first speaker from for this morning's lecture will be from the Reading Soul, Dr. Alfred Craig. Alfred, if you can unmute yourself for me. I'd like to say good morning to everyone. It is a blessing to be in the knowledge of Yahweh. You know how. My heart was one with the prayer that was given, but that's something God always showed me that we truly have to endure all the way into the end. The only way we can do that is through the Holy Spirit or the knowledge and the wisdom and understanding 
that Yahweh has given us. I want somebody to get Proverbs 30 and 4. And whoever read 30 and 4, I want you to stay there because I'm going to be coming back to that. But somebody begin at the fourth verse. Proverbs 30 and 4. Who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fist? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his okay. son's name? If thou know it. And I'm going to answer that question. Or the Holy Spirit going to answer it in the manner that Yahweh have shown me. Give me Nehemiah 9 and 1 through 8. Stop at the 8th verse. And the same question was asked too with Nicodemus there and the Messiah. So the same one that answered his question hopefully be the same one in each and every one of us to answer the question that we have. And that was one of the Magnificent things that stood out to me when I came to class. It ain't nothing wrong with verbalizing your question to y'all because I have done both. But a lot of hidden questions that I had, if I came to class and paid attention, a lot of questions was answered. Some of them I obeyed and some of them I didn't. The ones that I didn't obey then that was a penalty to be played, whether it was misery, disappointment, or whatever came along with it. Because Yahweh's truly, his principles going to stand whether we want to hear him or believe him or not. Read. Nehemiah 9 and 6. Thou, even thou art Yahweh alone. Hold up, pause have... right there. Yahweh alone. See, that's when it's necessary to start at the beginning. Yahweh wants to list existed alone and by himself. Yahweh don't need a shape and form because Yahweh is life itself. But what Yahweh did, he was going to make himself known to his creation. That's when he moved into a discernible shape and form. But before then, it was just pure intelligence. No concepts or anything. You understand? Yahweh created all those things. And I'm going to show you why he created those things too. But Yahweh alone is going to be Yahweh in the beginning. It's going to have to be Yahweh in the end. And that's mm -hmm. the whole purpose of this teaching. And one of the, Yahweh just making me appreciate all the simplicity of words that he used to give us. Yahweh would say over and over again, that migratory pattern, that it was a round trip. Mm -hmm. A round trip. A round trip. And I see why Yahweh was stressing that hard. But read on. Thou hast made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all their host, the earth. Hold and with, all with all their hosts. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing been left out. Now Yahweh's his pure spirit state is totally invisible, <laughs> inscrutable, incomprehensible. But when he moved in shape and form, what he was going to do, he was going to carry out what he had already purposed from the beginning. So it wasn't going to deviate at that point. When he created the angels, you understand? Now, if he said he created the angels, that lets you know at one time they didn't exist. He created the angelic realm, if you will. Mm -hmm. Read on. With all their host, the earth, and all things that are therein, the seas and all that are therein, and thou preservest them all. And the thou host of that's all hold up. Woo -wee. See, that's all going on now. All these things have been preserved and kept in store for Yahweh's children to come to the reality of what this thing has been all about. So that's why. It can end for you today, but it's still going to be preserved for those whom Yahweh have not quite got them to where they need to be. And those few words might have messed it up, but it's being preserved for a reason. Okay. You know. 
and thou preservest them all, and the host of heaven worshipeth thee. Thou art Yahweh of the Elohim, who didst choose thou art, Abram. Thou art Yahweh, and he's also Elohim. When he moves and shakes and forms, mm -hmm. once again, I love the simplicity of it. Somebody wanted to argue with me one time about, and I said, look, brother, you just said Yahweh before you said Elohim. But that's all Elohim is, Yahweh is shaping for. Mm -hmm. Read. Thou art Yahweh the Elohim, who didst choose Abram, and broughtest him forth out of Ur of the Chaldees, and gave Pause right there. Him... We might come back. We might come back to that, Miranda. Pause right okay. here. Okay. So we talk about Abraham and have a seed at one time. You understand? Talking about Yahweh himself. Yahweh choose. To have an only begotten son. So give me Psalms 90, and I'm just going to read the first two verses of Psalms 91 right there. And I also want Psalms 148. Give me Psalms 148, 1 through 14 first. Psalms 148, verse 1. Praise ye Yahweh. Praise ye Yahweh from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all, all of his hosts. And that's what his angels was created for, to glorify him. You right. understand? But because of Satan, hold up now, because of Satan's beauty and glory, he rebelled against that. He wanted to be glorified. He wanted to exalt himself. You understand? And consequences came with that. But they was created to glorify Yahweh, Yahweh alone. That's right. Please. <laughs> Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his hosts. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise him, all ye stars of light. Praise him, ye heavens of heaven, and ye waters that be above the heaven. Let them praise the name of Yahweh. For That's what really hold up. That's what really is important to know Yahweh's name. And that mm -hmm. is his name. You understand? And his son's name is Yahshua Messiah. You understand? And there will be no deviation from that. You understand? We don't. Let them praise the name of Yahweh, for he commanded and they were created. He has also established them forever and ever. He has made a decree which shall not pass. Praise Yahweh from the earth, ye dragons, and all deeps. <laughs> Fire and hail, snow and vapor, stormy wind fulfilling his word. Hold on now, everybody talking about what's going on out there in Texas, baby. You, you see it. You understand? I'm looking at the glory of Yahweh. Those things are carrying out his will. You understand? It's a beautiful thing. Read. Mountains and all hills fruitful trees, and all cedars, beasts, and all cattle, creeping things, and flying fowl, kings of the earth, and all people, princes, oh, and no. all... Oh, did you read, that? Mm -hmm. did you read yep. that right? Did you say kings of the earth? I read it again. Please. Kings Please. of the earth, and all people, princes, and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men hold up, hold and up, children. Hold up. You mean you understand? <laughs> That's why it's important for them to know something about Yahweh. You understand? Instead mm -hmm. of making right. excuses for them, you got to tell That's them about right. Yahweh. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's it. Read it again. Both young Tell men. Let me know when you get to the end of it, please. All right. 
both young men and maidens, old men and children, colon, let them praise the name of Yahweh, colon, for his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. Last verse. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his sons, even the children of Israel, a people near unto him, praise ye Yahweh. That's why when we go back to the migratory pattern and see why Yahweh mm-hmm. chose Israel because they was dear unto him. And let me say this, ain't nothing excellent about Jehovah, Jesus, or none of those false names. Ain't nothing excellent about it. You understand? Now give me Psalms, the, uh, the other one, the Psalms 90. I think there's one, one or two verses there. Psalms 90 and 1. O oh, Yahweh, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art ail. Thou turnest man to contrition and sayest, Return ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Pause right there. That's good. What I want you to know is Yahweh came from everlasting. Matter of fact, he never left. He just had a purpose to run, you understand, according to the time he had set. See, all that was explained to us about a thousand years as one day, the day as a thousand years with Yahweh. Before I came to this teaching, I didn't know how to apply none of that. Now, let's see why those things were created. Give me Revelations 4 and 11. It was to praise Yahweh. That's right. Go forth his glory. But give me another That's witness. Right. Revelation 4 and 11. Revelations 4 and 11. Thou art worthy, O Yahweh, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things. And for thy pleasure, they are and were created. That's right. That's it right there. You understand? Mm-hmm. Now, let's see how Yahweh brought this thing down. Give me Psalms 104. I want you to read uh, probably about the first four verses. Then I'm going to skip on down to about the 24th or 25th verse. Psalms 104. Psalms 104. Oh, go ahead, Bless Yahweh. O my soul, O Yahweh, my Elohim, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty, who covers thyself with light as with a garment, who stretches out. Pause right there. Pause right there. That was just a scripture, man, that I used to love when Yahweh used to call that scripture because it it brought so much understanding to me. So if Yahweh is invisible, then you, you can relate to he curved himself as light as a garment, because that's something you can comprehend. You understand? And also it shows forth a principle. When you say light, Yahweh clothed himself with light. Now we come on to understanding as we grow. You know, that also talks about our understanding being illuminated within us to get us out of that dark, benighted mind, you understand, that we was in because of the fall of Adam. It's a wonderful thing. But read on. Who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind, who maketh the winds his messengers and his ministers a flame and fire, who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever. Thou covers the twenty-fourth verse somewhere along the man. Oh Yahweh! Go ahead. Oh Yahweh! How manifold are thy works, 
and wisdom. That's something two people as, hold up. That's something we always have to keep in mind. The manifold wisdom of y'all. Because you, you have principles, a problem, principles, and then you have more principles. Different manifestations of very various principles there. Yahweh said himself, those things that the Messiah came in to fulfill, books of books can't contain them all. So we use those, but Yahweh has given us his Bible to go back in the law and the prophets to point out those principles. But there's no end. Because everything is saying in the praises of Yahweh. But it takes the Holy Spirit to reveal those things to us, which he has done and is doing and is going to do. Read. O Yahweh, how manifold are thy works. In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. So is the great... Ooh, I got to put this in there because I was reading... Uh, I'm talking about real educated people. You understand? Off in NASA and then, then in this satellite, you understand? Gave the view. And what they're trying to do, they was trying to see how stars Born. So then they say, then we can figure out how this universe came into existence. I'm telling you right now, the Holy Spirit, you understand? It's the kicker, though. They'll never find it that way. Because they That's don't right. understand that matter is spirit materialized. You understand? That's the answer to the question right there. But they don't know that, and they don't want to accept it. You understand? When you go tell them. Mm-hmm. You understand? Telling you how this thing came into being. And you realize the amount of money, you understand, they done spent and how they edu hired highly intelligent people and they think they're going to find it out that way? I think not. Read. So is this great and wide sea, wherein are things creeping innumerable, both small and great beasts, there go the ships. There is that Leviathan whom thou hast made to play therein. These wait all upon thee that thou mayest give them their food in due season. What thou givest them, they gather. Thou openest thine hand, they are filled with good. Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled. Thou takest away their breath, they die oh, and return oh. to their dust. Let me think about back there the song of Solomon. Now that I know they have seen the face of Yahweh through Yahshua Messiah, it's like I don't, I'll be looking for him now. Where is my will, beloved? You understand? Yahweh can put you in some situation and you're going to be singing that same song. You understand? Because it's going to make you more mature in this thing and also going to increase your faith. You understand? It ain't for me to judge situation is going to be or who is going to be, but we all have come that way. You understand? Mm -hmm. Where is you, God? <laughs> Telling you, baby, but it's a wonderful thing. You know, I could say more about that, but I'm not I'm going to conclude here, but finish reading there. Thou takest away their breath, they die and return to their dust. Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created, and thou renewest That's how the face whole, of the look. That's how this whole universe comes together. It's Yahweh's spirit, you understand, transmutated into whatever he wanted it to be. I will be what I will to be, you understand. Yahweh moved into shape and form. That's how he created the angelic host, you understand, the physical creation. He came on down and participated in it, you understand. And we had that real him recently, which I love. The children were partakers of flesh and blood. He likewise came down and took part of the thing. Give me Job 34, 14, and 15. And I also want Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. Job 34, 14, and 15. And 15. Let me know when you get to the 15 okay. verses and stop. Gotcha. If he set his heart upon man, if he gather unto himself his spirit and his breath. Oh, gather unto himself his spirit and his and breath. His breath. Yes. 
That's why we say Yahweh animates all things. He animates all creation, because that's his spirit that's carrying out his will. Read. If he set his heart upon man, if he gather unto himself his spirit and his breath, all flesh shall perish together, and man shall turn again unto dust. If we had over in the scripture lesson, flesh, that is other flesh, is flesh, and all flesh return to the dust of the earth from whence it came. Okay. Now give me Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. Let's see what's happened to the spirit. Keep in mind what I said earlier. It's a round trip. Read. Okay. Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. Then shall the then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. And the spirit shall return unto Elohim who gave it. Who gave it? <laughs> Don't become arguing with me about no Jesus Christ or no Buddha or no Allah or nobody else. You understand? Nothing could exist, you understand, without Yahweh, Yahweh, Elohim. And that's who I get to deal with, baby. That's a wonderful thing that right. Yahweh brought his name unto me. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. His own arm um, brought salvation to himself. I'm going to conclude right. with you. I want you to read Proverbs, and I'm going to stop. I want you to end it at about the, uh, I'm going to hit this vanity thing right quick. Go back to Proverbs. And let me know when you get back to the ninth verse. And I'm going to end with Isaiah 25 and just the first verse. Read. Go back to read that, Vanessa. Uh, 30. 30. 30. You want to start at yeah. the first verse yeah. again? Okay. Yeah, you might as well. Okay. Proverbs 30 and 4. Who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fist? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his Pause name? right quick, Vanessa. What is his name? Vanessa, let me put this one in there right quick. I think it's over in Ephesians 4 and about 6. Then we're going to come back there. I'm going to try to finish it on up. Ephesians 4 and 6. One is Yahweh and Father of all. Who is Hold up, people. Keep that. Who is this? I could go on and on. Keep that in mind. <laughs> After Yahweh multiplied Abraham's seed, you understand? And they got down to Egypt. We give you the number. They was, you know, the ones above 20 years old. He multiplied them exceedingly. But if you go over there and pick up in Hosea, it says, out of Egypt, I call what? My wow. son, singular. I always bring this thing back into the harmony of the unity of the spirit. Mm. We don't know this. One is Yahweh and father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of the Messiah. Pause, that's good. And I go back to, uh, I don't want to get off into that, but there it is. And all that division coming in. Yahweh and had grace on, on us all. And all of us got the proper gift that Yahweh used as he see fit. Going back to uh, Proverbs. What is his name and what is his son's name if thou knowest it? Every word of a lower is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Oh, and that's another thing we take for granted, too, about getting back to the pureness of this thing. Your thoughts, and I'm talking about myself, but me and Yahweh, we be, be having a good time with that one, man. But my thoughts, man, were so corrupt and unpure. And Yahweh had to point those things out to me. But we're talking about the pureness of Yahweh because ain't nothing unclean going back. You can't come to Yahweh with all that filth in you. You understand? You're saying Yahweh's spirit. You got to discern between, you know what I'm saying, the righteous spirit of Yahweh and the spirit of that other spirit. Hatred is spirit too. You feel me? Mm. <laughs> Go ahead and read, Vanessa. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Two things have hold I up, Hold up, hold up. 
Mm-hmm. Hold up. You see what I'm talking about? Lying. That's spirit, too. You understand? Who was going to convince Ahab that I may kill him? Mm-hmm. We'll see it on this wire. All we'll right. We'll see it on that wire. How will you, I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all this prophet. And that man in was deaf. All these witnesses that Yahweh have put in us, you understand? And let me say this. So when we are preaching this gospel, the Holy Spirit will bring forth all those witnesses as Yahweh sees fit. You understand? It's something I got to sit around, you understand? And, but anyway, we don't. Two things have I required of thee. Did not meet them not before I die. Remove forth from me vanity and lies. Give me neither Paul, poverty. Paul, Paul, mm-hmm. you Paul, you right. for a whole lot of things. You understand? I ain't got to call nobody out. I know all the things I ask y'all. You understand? Some of the stuff, <laughs> I get mad at myself, be asking for them, the same old stupid stuff until this day. But you got to want to get rid of it. You understand? Asking y'all. If, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to call. I'm not going to give no examples. Then everybody want to take it. Oh, you're talking about me. Or you shouldn't have said that. You understand? But how many have you asked Yahweh, these, get rid of some of this stuff here? Read. Two things have I required of thee. Deny me them not before I die. Remove from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me, lest I That's be my full. Prayer. That's my prayer, my testimony. And keep in mind, this is another witness. When Eve was in Adam, she was fine. Eve represents the creation. When she was drawn out of Adam, she was made subject to vanity. That's right. You understand? Yahweh was sitting around guessing what she was going to do. He knew where that vanity was going to lead her. You understand? It led her to disobey. You understand? And childbearing, and she did feel that pain. You understand? These witnesses of Yahweh are true. And I'm glad they speak to me, you understand, continuously. Let's be Yahweh, Yahweh. Please. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me, lest I be full and deny thee and say, Who is Yahweh? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my El in vain. We don't want that to happen. I don't want that. I don't want that to happen to anybody. You understand? What did Pharaoh say? Who is this Yahweh? Mm-hmm. You understand? Got him on these calls now on YouTube. I don't care where you are. Yahweh is looking right at you. Think you can win against Yahweh with your foolishness. You understand? <laughs> you better go back. You understand? Get in there and see where Yahweh, the power of Yahweh, you understand, is written in, 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 in those scriptures. I'm going to mm-hmm. finish with uh. Isaiah 25, and uh, I, th- I just want the phrase first. Isaiah 25, and 1. Oh, Yahweh, thou art my Eloah. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. That's what I'm talking about. So when we go back, Every time I go back, you know what I'm saying, the Holy Spirit teach me and teach me. It always takes me back to those former things of old that was preached unto me and that was laid down. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. That's right. what I'm talking about. Right. Thank Yahweh for the opportunity to uh, express what he's given me to express. And I want to say this too. Most of the time, I purposely try to condense these things down because I know truly Yahweh is able to give and give us all food that's convenient for all of us. Thank you. May Yahweh continue to bless us all. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very good. Very good. All right. Our next speaker, next speaker will also be from Meridian Soul, Dr. David Cole. David, if you can meet yourself, please.
Good morning to the family and Yahshua the Messiah. Good morning. I am indeed uh I am indeed thankful to uh to hear the words of eternal life and to hear them spoken by the Holy Spirit, speaking in his sons the things that he would have them to know where we are at this point in, in this creation. Um, I so, so enjoyed, uh, well, I've been enjoying all the classes recently and I enjoyed uh, last Sunday in particular because of the way the Holy Spirit has been bringing the body along, if you will, to make one understand that there is a pattern and there's an order a divine order in which these things are done. So I'm so thankful to uh, to be able to speak and to uh, talk of the glory of Yahweh and to praise him and all that uh, he has done and is doing for those that has an ear to hear. Um, Um, go back and pick up um, Psalms 104 and start at the 30th, the 29th verse. Psalms 104 and 29. Now, before you start there, um, the way the Holy Spirit has just performed for us, and again, I say by the pattern, because it starts... Well, you know what I need first? Let me do this before I do that, because this is what the Holy Spirit just did. And this is what I woke up with or what he gave me before I got on the call. I need the moderate, moderator to go back to the moderation and pick up um, there where he first starts talking about Yahweh. And, and, and in saying this, this is, <clears throat> this is what we were given to keep us in the unity of the spirit. This is what we were given in order to show us what it meant to, to, to discern and to understand Yahweh's eternal purpose and pattern. This is an introduction for anyone who, who first hears anything of this teaching to begin to know and understand about their, their heavenly father and what he is all about. Psalms 30 and four was perfect. This book, and the way Yahweh has laid it down, it's always been uh, a source for those who, who, who are of the Holy Spirit to go in and receive the, the sustenance of the food that Yahweh will cause them to have in order for them to be made whole. <clears throat> because the bottom line is, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to let him get to the moderation, but the bottom line here is this, as he just, as the Holy Spirit just read there in Psalms 90 and 4, it's Yahweh from eternity. He said, the book said everlasting, but it's from eternity to eternity. And what, <clears throat> what I received in hearing uh, the first speaker speak was the order in which this teaching is to be done and how you are to bring one to a more profound knowledge of his creator. Now, it, it requires that he himself ask questions within himself because that is the only way to receive knowledge. If you never ask a question, you never get any answers. If you ask a question, just like any child does, when a child is first coming to the world, then there's a, that's gonna be a whole lot of questions, which I wanna go back to the scripture lesson in just a minute. But let's do this and then I'll, I, I don't expect to be long with what Yahweh has given me. Moderator. Okay, where you want me to start at? The beginning? Yeah, Yahweh is the truth. Okay. Uh, now, before you start, let me just say this one thing. I'm just trying to qualify something here. I'm trying to qualify the fact that we are talking about the unity of the spirit. I want you to hear what's being said and who it is that's in it. And that's all who's in it. Read. Go ahead, Doc. Yahweh is the true name of our Heavenly Father, which was once laid down in the scriptures. 
We have Yahweh symbolized as a cloud on this chart because Yahweh symbolized himself as a cloud in many passages of your Bible. Now, we have do, the you believe that? do you believe what you're reading? Do you believe what's being said? Do you believe that this is real? Because see, it first has to start with you believing. Then after, as you begin to believe it, then Yahweh, Yahweh sees your faith and then he begins to give you more faith in that. And eventually you get to the point where you have enough witnesses that you begin, begin to know this as it really is and actually exists. Go ahead, Doc. He said, we have Yahweh symbolized as a cloud on this chart because Yahweh symbolized himself as a cloud in many passages of your Bible. So if you wanted to know that question, if you wanted that question to be answered, you got Exodus 24th chapter to go to. You got all of these other chapters in the book to show you how to get the, get a knowledge and understanding of Yahweh. Now, <clears throat> go ahead, Doc. So that everything on the chart is within the cloud. Just as everything that exists, exists within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Now, in this pure spirit state, Yahweh has no descriptive shape or form in which he is us from a source and substance, the limits and the bounds of everything that exists. Now, now when you're you trying to change... Oh, you can't change that. Yahweh, in this pure spirit state, has no descriptive shape or form. Now, we're talking about being obedient, and we're talking about what it takes to know Yahweh as he really is and actually exists. Yahweh, in his pure spirit state, has no descriptive shape and form. It's like unto a child <clears throat> when he comes into the world. He has no particular thoughts or shapes and forms in his head. Neither, neither did you <clears throat> when you were formed in your mother's womb. You had no descriptive shapes and forms. But Yahweh himself is beginning to show you what it takes to come and know what spirit is and how spirit operates. Go ahead. Now, when your translators have come across the true and correct name of our Heavenly Father Yahweh, you have usually inserted the English title Lord. Yahweh taken on a people. Super incorporeal shape and form within himself, known as the word of son, is Elohim. Now, super incorporeal means without physical flesh and blood. And in this state, y'all, with him can only be seen on divine vision and revelation, as stated in Exodus 24, 9 and 10. Then when Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and they saw the Elohim of Israel. Now, remember, they saw Elohim in divine vision and revelation. Now, now you're right translating. There. Right there. Now, he just gave you another uh, uh, Yahweh taking on shape and form or a super incorporeal shape and form. Now, now some may think this don't mean anything, but I, Yahweh told me that this needs to be done a second time because many times we get on the call and we just take it for granted that we know it. I was a moderator myself. I know that if you get into this moderation, it will free you from all kinds of things. And I mean, all your thoughts, all the things that you, you have that it can come up against you and so forth and so on. And I mean, from even from death. If you just know the origin of what you under, understand, the origin of what he's saying to you here. If the founder had, and he did tell us that if you just not knew the moderation, you could be blessed then that, that, that's obvious the thing that one of the things that you need to do. And, and I'm, not, I'm, I'm not trying to be on nobody about doing anything. I'm just speaking what the Holy Spirit has given me to speak, which is to make you aware. If you want to know Yahweh, you have to be obedient to the letter. To the direct letter, you have to be obedient because he did say he fulfilled a jot and tittle which is all the way down to the, 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 the yard that you see in the name. But anyway, I'm not keep the unity. Go ahead, Doc. Now, your translator has come across the true and correct divine title for Yahweh in shape and form known as Elohim. You have usually inserted the English title, God. Yahweh Elohim manifested on a physical body as a sacred world is Yahshua the Messiah, as stated in John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh. And in the fourteenth verse, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, 
Glory as I was only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, now when your translators have... Now, in last Sunday's lecture, I was telling you about the purpose of Yahweh and what the purpose of Yahweh was. And, and, and to my knowledge, to my recollection, and I hope all y'all remember this, it was about the glory. It was showing forth the glory of Yahweh. That's what this is all about, to manifest his glory. So his sons, as you just read, and we're going to read here, over here in this uh, 104 in Psalms. But the, the point here is that as he steps down through this moderation, or as he steps down through this introduction of Yahweh, he is expressing to all those who would be, who would want to know the truth, what it's all about. He come from a pure spirit state to a super incorporeal state and down into a physical form. So Yahweh in, uh, manifests in a physical body as the savior of the world. Need to stop right there and see what we're talking about. The first speaker just showed you him as the savior of the world and all the things that he, did, that he had done or is doing for the sons. Talking about praising him and all the things that he has done for us to make us know him. So he said, Yahweh manifests in the physical body as the savior of the world is known as Joshua, the Messiah. Didn't say Allah, didn't say Jesus, didn't say Buddha, didn't say anything else other than this. And, and see, this is backed up. This moderation is backed up by this chart that you see before you. This chart is giving you a panorama of the whole purpose of Yahweh from start to finish. And it also states in this moderation that there are other charts and other things about it that you should know about. The founder told us to study all things, to study everything. Well, it, it put it to us this way so that we could know Yahweh as he really is and actually exists. You have Yahshua, the Messiah, in a physical form so that you won't be afraid to know Yahweh. What do you mean? What are you talking about? That you may be able to know him just like you know your your the man next to you, because it's all talking about the savior being in a physical body to bring his sons back to the light. If you couldn't, if you didn't think that it was, if it wasn't a way for you to know him, then it, it didn't make any sense for him to come into a physical form. But that's what he did. He did it in that way. So you would be able to come to know him as he really is and actually exists because he is pure spirit. He is incorporeal or super incorporeal, and he is the physical that you see before you. He's made it that way, so you don't have an excuse. This is Romans 1, 19 and 20, which is our sing song. He made it this way, so you don't have an excuse. So he got made man in his own likeness and image. And now you're able to see the man, you see, that he made just by looking at yourself in the mirror, looking at any other man, a woman, child, whatever it may be. So the point of it is, is that for you to, you, you, we have so much th that we can know. And when you begin to trust him, he began to slow you down. Yeah, tribulation is going to happen. It has to happen. But it's happening for the express purpose of getting you to stop and become to know your father or become to know uh, him as he really is and exists. So let me bring that down so I can tell you what I'm talking about. Go to uh, Genesis, the, the 12th chapter. We'll start there. And all I'm trying to do here, all the Holy Spirit is doing here is, is bringing things up to date. And what, am you, what are you saying that for? Everything that Yahweh has done for us has, has been done to bring us to this point where we are this day. I also need Revelation 12, and, I mean 10 and 7, but it's to bring us to this point where we are this day. So now what we, what the what the Holy Spirit did last week, and this is where all this is coming from, I'm just connecting it. It slowed it down enough for you to see Yahweh in operation in his vessels. The vessels that he pulled out of the scriptures in order for you to see him were done as principles of what faith meant, what power meant, what uh, strength, what love is, what beauty is, what justice is all about, what it means not to lie, but to tell the truth 
And then the Messiah come in as the personification of the, of the scriptures. And the personification means to, he was the, the uh, we need to look that word up. I need to get that word looked up too. But anyway, we'll get that in a minute. So what, but what I want to do here is try to show you what Yahweh was doing in his, in his creation. And it's just slowed down to see him in all three states. And to see that what he spoke came to pass. Mm -hmm. Read the first verse. Genesis 12 and 1. Now Yahweh had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy so now, house. I'm sorry, I'm sorry Vanessa. What, what has to be understood, and every time we get to reading these things, is understand that this is a vision that Moses had atop Mount Sinai that Yahweh is expressing to him the things that happened before Moses was even born. Just like your parents or your your father, your mother, or your grandparents can express things to you of things that happened before you were born. And then you began to, if you began to look into those things, like someone knowing about World War I or World War II, and you can go in and begin to look at those things and, and know that they were true or they're not, they're telling you the reality of the thing. And that's what, that's what this is all about. So Yahweh said unto Abram, to get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred. See, now, the, 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 the Elohim book tells us that Yahweh invariably reveals himself to us when we are alone and by ourselves. Now, if you don't believe that, then what I'm saying to you, you're just going to pass it right on by and it won't be no more to you today than it will next week. And see, many times when, when we think somebody else is talking to us, we don't hear Yahweh. So we're saying that, we, you know, uh, I don't like the way his voice sounds. I don't like what he's talking about. I don't like this. But see, you don't realize this is Yahweh's will. I can't change it. And you can't either. The best you can do is do is to listen and see what he's trying to show in it. If, when you realize that, then you realize that now it's your spirit that you got to answer for. Just like what I'm getting to here, Abraham now is Yahweh dealing with him one on one. Yahweh dealt with Moses one-on-one. -on -one. Yahweh dealt with you. One, he's dealing with you one-on-one. -on -one. It's just you and him. And he's trying to make you understand that he is your father. He is your all in all. He is your mother. He is the one that causes you, as you just read over there, Ecclesiastic and the other books, that gives you breath. So when you begin to meditate or begin to get alone and by yourself and see those things, then you can be prepared for what's coming up because we got to get prepared. And that's what he's doing all the time is preparing us for what's coming because it's going to get worse. Don't expect it to change. It's going to get worse than what you see. So now this is what Abram, Abram had to do. He had to do what? Read, Vanessa. Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Hold, hold, hold it, hold it. See, you just you, you just have to slow it down and look at it. Now, he's going to take him to a land. Now, Yahweh is spirit. But he's also a land. What are you talking about? The, 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 the knowledge of what land is, is where you translate the natural to understand the spiritual. Yahweh is taking Moses somewhere within himself. You see what I'm saying? He is the land. He made the man from the dust of the earth, right? So then if he made him from the dust of the earth, that he's, that, that, that's the earth, that's the land, that's the same thing. See, unto a land that I will show thee. That's what you want to know. Read. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. So that name is great even now. Now he changed his name to Abraham. Now you got the Jew and the Gentile coming out of the same man. And now you got a fight over in, in what's so-called is Israel over there that they're mm -hmm. fighting one another and they're, they're really brothers and uh, brothers. But then they don't see what Yahweh is doing. So therefore they are against one another. And by the way, since I'm at that point, let me say this. I, I don't know how many of you saw uh, CBS this morning, Saturday morning, yesterday. But they're getting ready to offer up some red heifers 
They already has a, have an altar built over there in Israel on Mount, uh, Mount Moriah. Did anyone see that report? Anyway, the point is, is that they are getting ready to offer up these red heifers because it, it's going to invoke the Messiah coming back. This is what they believe. Now, if you want to find it, it's on CBS Saturday morning and you just go to one of the segments and it'll show you what they were talking about. And the and and, and the um, the extension of it, the cows came from Texas and they have Mike Johnson, who is the leader of the, uh, the Republican House right now. He is the one who's, who made the statement yesterday on this particular uh, report of what he's doing, uh, what they, he, in other words, he went to a breakfast, a, a religious breakfast, and this is what they were talking about, trying to bring Jesus back. So then we need to be aware of these things and be, on the, uh, be prepared for what Yahweh is getting ready to do because they study going off the, off the reservation. That's, I don't want to get into that. Anyway, I wanted you to know that that's, that's out there now, that they're trying to do that. And they're getting ready. They said those cows will be, uh, those heifers will be offered up. And by the way, it's in Numbers 16th chapter, if you want to know where they're coming from. 16, 15, or 16. Anyway, they, they, they're, um, not, say not those, sac they, they will be sacrificed this sometime in the next, next few days. And I wanted you to know that you're also close to the Passover and be aware mm -hmm. of what Yahweh is doing and be conscious that he is in control of these things, not what mm -hmm. appears to be. He is in control. So you have to steal yourself to come to those places within yourself in order to know him or to watch him. And don't be watching yourself or watching others. Watch what he is doing in you. Okay, uh, go ahead, Vanessa. Let me I'm gonna try to keep this tight as I was getting stretched out. Third verse. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So now Yahweh is setting up, bringing in a, uh, a people that he can teach and begin to show him his way and to show him his how he is. Now go to uh go to Psalms 104, and this is why he's doing it. Psalms 104 and 20. No, no. Now, start at no. no. Start at uh start at 30. Oh, I'm sorry. 30. 29. Wait, 20, 29 is what you said earlier. 29. Okay, just start at 29, yeah. Okay, uh Psalms 104, 29. Thy hottest thy face, they are troubled. Let me, uh, uh, and there's so many things where we are now. It's just so many things that, that, that Yahweh is showing in these scriptures for the sons to be aware of. Right. Don't you see that the famine that he's causing in this world now, that he's hitting their face and they are troubled? Don't mm -hmm. you see that the, 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 the drive-by shootings, the, the carjackings, the, the, all these mm -hmm. things that are going on? That they don't see that they're being that, that Yahweh is 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 looking at them, and, and, and they think they're getting away with something. Mm -hmm. Read. Now, how does thy face? They are trouble. Thou take it away their breath. They die and return to their dust. Now I'm gonna try to get into the, that tabernacle here in just a minute to, to talk about that. But read on. Thou sendest forth thy spirit. They are created. And thou renewest the face of the earth. Read. The glory of Yahweh shall endure forever. Now, you join that with what you just read over there in 90, what the first people had read over there in 90 and 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. He is from, his glory is from everlasting to everlasting. Read. He looketh on the earth. And it trembleth. No, no, no. Go back 31. Okay, and finish it. 31. I'm sorry. The glory of Yahweh shall endure forever. Yahweh shall rejoice in his works. Now, the first speaker showed you over there in Revelation that this was for his pleasure. This is he's rejoicing in this. So now, when you accept who you are, then don't you see you're going to have to, re you're going to be able to rejoice in that also? So what am, I, what am I doing this for? I'm 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 after really if, if Yahweh is showing me 
that the unity of the spirit is highly important in our where we are now. The unity of the spirit is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Doc, if you would just go back to the, to the moderation and finish that, that, that last part there. But remember. Are you ready? Yes. Now, when your translators has come across the true and correct name of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, they have usually inserted false and erroneous names such as Jesus Christ. But remember, Yahweh in pure spirit as the Father, Yahweh in a super incorporeal shape and form known as the Word of Son is Elohim, and Yahweh manifested in a physical body as the Savior of the world is Yahshua the Messiah. So Yahweh he's telling you in the right, hold on. Just a second before you before you go read that next part. The next part is where, really what I'm trying to get to. But he just combined the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to show you how they were manifested through his purpose so that you would understand what you're looking at as it's being explained to you by the Holy Spirit. See, when, when Yahweh gave the vision in 31, his purpose was, was to cause those who eyes, spiritual eyes were already open to begin to see and understand what they had received and what had come unto them. And I'm gonna go to Matthews 25, 25 and 34, and also uh, Matthew 19 and 14, no, I'm sorry, Mark 10 and 14, and Luke 18, 16. And then I'm gonna try to get out of the way. So he just said, but remember, Yahweh in his pure spirits, in, in pure spirit as a father, Yahweh taking on his supreme corporeal shape and form within himself as the word of son, known as Elohim, and Yahweh manifested in the physical body as the savior of the world, as Joshua the Messiah. Now, you see the pure spirit, you see the angels, and you see the physical. The speaker just got to talking about the angels, how Yahweh created them as well. So he's showing us by the pattern that he is pure spirit, he is incorporeal uh, angel form, and he's also physical. And there's also many angels, if you will. Remember the satanic, the satanic spirit was cast down to the earth and there are demons called, they're called demons down here. But know that I'm telling you these things to be aware of so that you would understand what you're looking at. And for any speaker who's coming in here for the first time, you need to understand that pattern. You need to come in, I said speaker, for anyone who's here for the first time, you need to understand that pattern. You need to come in and begin to look into that pattern and understand what it's doing because it's showing you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And in this manif and what it's doing in that, it is making you to understand the principles of the purpose and what Yahweh is doing in his purpose. He shows you the visible as well as the invisible. So this last uh, this part of the moderation says this, as he just read, but remember Yahweh in his pure spirit as a father, Yahweh taking on the supreme corporeal form within him as the word of son and uh, known as Elohim, I'm sorry, within himself known as Elohim and Yahweh manifests in the physical body as the savior of the world known as Joshua the Messiah. I don't like to read fast. Yahweh in his two manifestations, but one spirit. This is what's key. When a speaker is speaking to you and you don't know anything about this pattern, you all over the place because you don't realize whether he's talking spiritually so or physically so. What do you mean by that? There is a discerning or a, uh, being uh, a, a, a discerning of the spirit of Yahweh in these types and shadows, in these principles. So then it requires that whenever, for instance, let me do it this way. As he as the moderation go on to say, and uh, back with the Messiah, say so Yahweh, um, I said in John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the word. That spirit, you can't see that. You can't see a word, but you understand what it means. Then it says in the 14th verse, the word was made flesh. Now he's brought that other manifestation forward so you can understand him in those two forms. Now, what are you saying about that, uh, Father? What are you trying to show us in that? I'm trying to show you that there's a process or there's a direct correlation between the invisible and the visible. Why so? So that you'll know that when the Messiah came in and manifested on the earth plane and took the body off, being that fourth branch, which was so beautifully brought out last week, being that fourth, fourth thousand year or that fourth branch, 
He come in to turn the light on. What do you turn the light on for? So my children or my sons won't be in darkness. I can pick up Adam and all those that are back behind, and I can pick up the, the, where I am and those that are coming forth. And that's what the Messiah was talking about over there in, in, in uh, 17 John, that he wasn't just speaking to those that were there with him, but those who would hear after he had taken it off. So here we go. Yahweh is two manifestations, but one spirit. Now, I was having you to go to, what did I have you just going to? Matthew. Matthew, Matthew and, Mark. And, and Mark. Okay. Go to Matthew then, and I, I want to show you now how what it takes in order to, uh, 25, 34 first, but I want to show you this. And let me say this. Uh, uh, Luke 17 and 20 says, tell us this. Says the kingdom does not come by observation. Is that right? Do I need to right. read it? We we'll probably need to read it. Okay. Yeah. Yes, let's do that. Luke 17 and 20. The, out of mm -hmm. King James. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of Yahweh should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom cometh not with observation. So, so stop right there. So he was demanded of these scribes and Pharisees who were rulers of, the, of Israel at the time, who knew the law and were supposed to be the interpreters of the law. But see, he, he was, had to correct them in every sense because they didn't really understand what the spirit was doing. See, just like the preachers are in the world today, are there anyone that, that, that uh, is walking around here think they know anything about this Bible? Except the Holy Spirit reveals it to you. You have no... You, let's say it the way we always said. You just you just as lost as a snowball in hell. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 I should say a ball in high weeds. But my point is, is you're lost. So Luke seventeen and twenty says this. Read it again, Vanessa. And when he was Sorry. demanded of the Pharisees, when the and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of Yahweh should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of Yahweh cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of Yahweh is within you. So then, I have to now tell you about the kingdom of Israel that was back under the, in the law and the prophets back there. You need to know that that was a kingdom. But I just showed you, uh, Yahweh is showing that he's spirit now. He said the kingdom doesn't come by observation. So now what we're looking for now ain't going to come by you looking outside of yourself to try to find it. It's not going to be there. Mm -hmm. We're showing you that the words that he speak, they are spirit and they are life. And it requires that you be a studious person, if you will, and get into what the scriptures or what the, the words are saying. Because he's showing truly that he is the word himself and that all things are done by the word. All things was created by it. And all things come forth from it. So in being an obedient child, you would be your, be about your father's business to be studious and look for what he's trying to show you. So it doesn't come by observation. See, and neither shall they say low here, low there. As they're trying to do over there with bringing the Messiah back. It's not going to be in Jerusalem. It's not going to be in on, on, on the mountaintop. It's not going to be in that like that. It's going to have to be okay. a spiritual migration in your heart and mind to know him as he really is and actually exists. So the Messiah was, <clears throat> we're going to get back to the scripture lesson in just a minute, but the Messiah was saying this over there in Matthew 25 and 34. Matthew 25 and 34. I bet, I'll tell you what, I'm sorry. Now, forgive me for this. We just had to need to get the whole thought, and I'm so sorry. That's all right. 31. Okay. Matthew 25, 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, no, then no, just, shall... Just, just right there. Um, it's just so many things. Uh, so when was that? When did that happen? The Son of Man come in his glory? 
see, that's not all from us. That's that. That's now. That was Pentecost. 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 Mm -hmm. That was Pentecost. That was for us. To, you see what I'm saying? The world is looking for them to come back. We're not caught up in what they're looking for. Because right. he's here. He's here now. See, his glory is in front of you now. The judgment is now. Mm -hmm. That's right. You're in the judgment now. He's gonna, he, we're going to read that in just a minute. Read. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Hadn't he already sat down on the right hand of the Father? Read. Yes, sir. And before him shall be gathered all nations. Right now. Right. You saw it on at Pentecost when they, all, they heard him all in, the, in, in different voice, in, in different languages, but they understood. Right. But they're standing before him now, even as we speak. And then the Gentiles come in later. But um, my point is, is that, that those are the nations. Read. And he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. That's the judgment, read. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So then, mm -hmm. You got in order to we say it didn't come by it didn't, didn't come by observation. You got to know something about the kingdom. Mm -hmm. It is needful that you understand what, what what he's telling you. You're coming in too. How can you enter in something that you don't know nothing about? Mm -hmm. That the kingdom is righteousness, peace, joy, and happiness in the Holy Spirit. Well, when you right. look into that, what righteousness is he talking about? That's the righteousness of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. That's his, that's his scriptures, if you want to really see it and see more of it. That's him laying down his law or his, and his prophets to show you what righteousness was all about. And he used the, 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 the contrast to make you understand the power of the, of the, of the scriptures or the, or, the, or the types and shadows of the, understand the, the power of the spirit, I put it that way, which was him operating through his vessels as he had said it so to make you know that he is Yahweh through and through and he is a unity. So he said the kingdom was set up before the foundation of the world. So then for you to understand where you are, you have to be able to see this kingdom that he's talking about that doesn't come by observation. That's in the Messiah. That is the Messiah. This is his kingdom. Oh, man. And that's something that you need to know about that. That's that's why the body is being formed like it is. But we will get that later. Go back. Go now to Mark, and then to Luke, and then I'm gonna try to move out of the way here, please. I hope, Father. Yeah, Mark, Mark, what? What in Mark? What, what 10, in Mark? 14. Ten fourteen. Ten fourteen. Okay. Mark ten fourteen. Now, but when y'all. Let's make sure I'm, I'm, I'm getting you right. We started the 13th verse. 13. Mm -hmm. And they brought young children to him and he that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. Now, why did they but do when, that? Because of the old man mm -hmm. that was in them. Read. Yeah. But when Yahshua saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, let the little children come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of Yahweh. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of Yahweh as a little child, he shall not enter therein. Can you see how cut and dry that is? And can you mm -hmm. also see why when, when Nicodemus was asking the question about being born again, this is what God, Joshua was showing him that what he had, what it had to happen. He had to become as a child in order for you to begin to know the, the mysteries or the secrets of Yahweh, the revelations that he has to give unto his sons. Does that make sense? Does it does, go to go to Luke 18, 16? You want to read the same thing, but go there anyway. 
Luke 18, 16. But Yahshua called them and said. Get, get to Saul, I'm sorry. 15. Okay, okay. Let's go to 15, okay. And they brought unto him also infants that he, sh that he would touch them. And when his disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Yahshua called them and said, let the little children come unto me and forbid them not. For of such is the kingdom of Yahweh. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of Yahweh as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. I remember coming into this teaching thinking that I knew something, thinking that I was, I, I, I you know, could tell the dean or talk, tell anybody something because I thought I, you know, I didn't really study the Bible. I just thought it, it just made sense. But that's not the way it is, y'all. Mm -mm. You must become as a child. You must be, realize that you don't know mm -hmm. and you never knew. You must come to the point that, that, that except Yahweh had left you, a, a, you see what I'm saying? A, a, You'll see. If he had, and except he had left you, uh, we'd be like Solomon and Gomorrah if he had right. left, hadn't left you something. So it is imperative that you understand where you are and what, you, what you're coming into. So the kingdom doesn't come by observation. So you need to know something about the kingdom. That the kingdom is righteousness, peace, joy, and happiness in the Holy Spirit. Well, what does that look like? Well, see, you look in your scriptures and he'll show you what that looks like. We don't have time to go into all of it now. So let me, let me just wrap this up here and, and I want to go to... Uh, Uh, Deuteronomy 6 and 4 Zechariah 14 and 9 John 17 and 20 and uh, he read uh, earlier the Ephesians 4 because what I'm after here is, is just what we just so beautifully was done in the, by the previous speaker but read Deuteronomy 6 4. Here are uh, Vanessa, as, as usual, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not getting the complete thought, and that's what I'm always after. Because that's where, with, when the Holy Spirit is speaking uh, through the speaker last week, the whole point of it was to see you, to get you to see the whole thought. As the Holy Spirit was telling you about colons and periods and semicolons and commas. All these things are needful. They're necessary for you to get the complete thought and understand what this, what's being said. So mm -hmm. start up there at the uh, first, first verse. verse. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. Now these are the commandments, the statutes and the judgments, which Yahweh, your Elohim, commanded to teach you. That you to do what? Do them, to, to do what? To teach you. Okay, that's, that's, that's okay. Go ahead. I hope to you heard teach, it. To teach you that you might do them in the land where you go to possess it. Now, which land is that? Where is that land at? See? Yahweh's spirit. Read. That thou mayest fear Yahweh thy Elohim to keep all his statutes and his judgments which I command thee, thou and thy son, and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. See, Yahweh here was rendered, Yahweh was, and you've heard it spoken many times from the floor here, Yahweh was rendered unconscious in, in these bodies that we're in. So he's telling them what they had to do in order for them to come into this realization of him, see? This is Israel back there, but we we got to got to put it on us because that's what it's talking about. We're the ones who had to come on mind when we come to it, when we, we come to this point. So he's trying to correct in you now what wasn't correctable in them back there. Read. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily. As Yahweh Elohim of thy fathers hath promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear when Yahweh speaks the word, when Yahweh speaks a word, he is giving you all he is. 
Mm -hmm. He's giving you, he's showing you and performing for you to, to know him as he really is. Mm -hmm. Read. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh, our Elohim, is Yahweh a unity. And thou shalt love Yahweh thy Elohim with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. So that's all three. All thy might, which is spirit, all thy soul, and all thy, thy they said, we love Yahweh awesome. with all thy heart, thy soul, and thy might, that spirit, right. soul, and body. So, uh, right quick, go over to uh, John 17. And there's so many things, because if you read Isaiah, the, and I just meant, mentioned this one right quick, if you read Isaiah, the second chapter, which is what we're talking about here. You'll find out that Yahweh said this. He said the word of Am Ammon, of Isaiah, the son of Ammon, uh, saw concerning Judah. And it shall come to pass in the last days, that's where we are, that the mountain or the kingdom, that's what's translated in my Bible, of Yahweh's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. That's what's happening now. And he's going to say this, and many shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh, to the house of our Lord of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways. And we will walk in his path. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, the law and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. And it's just so many other things there, but we won't, we won't go there. Go 17. John 17 and 1. <laughs> These words spake Yahshua and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. Should, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I need you to skip down. I'm just, I'm just after one thing in particular and, and reading okay. it out. Here. Uh, that, that's down to the um, 18th verse. Okay, 18. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Great. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither There's pray a I... There's a, lot, there's a lot there, but we don't have time. Go ahead. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, mm -hmm. that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Mm -hmm. Three. And, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. So he, talks about, he, he talks about them being a unity and being, right. and being one. So that's what you read over there in Ephesians. There's one, one baptism, one truth, one is Elohim, one is Yahweh, the Father of all and through all and in you all. Now, I, I, I thank you so much for the time, and I, I pray that the family will begin to meditate on the things that are being said. And I got mm -hmm. one thing, Colin, I know I'm, I'm past my time, but I'm going to say this right quick. That was a letter that was given in 2005 on June 8th by Sandra Gorgosian. Just a quick excerpt of that letter is this. He said, during, she said, during my visit, he shared many things with me, which I in turn have shared with you. I knew, however, that there was something more that I was to do. Now, this is 2005. Remember, we're in a reality of y'all. That's, that's me talking. We're in the reality of Yahweh now. We're not going nowhere. We're already here. While accompanying me to the airport for my return, I'm reading now, to New York, Dr. Kelly told me to lead the people home. He said it again, adding Mitch's name. Now, this is 2005. 
Then he said it in the third time, and I asked, am I to do as Moses? He replied, that's right. I knew that we didn't have to do a physical exodus from New York, but I never fully understood until Monday night that our exodus from this physical is upon us. He suddenly revealed to me that I am to tell you specifically now that time is very short. I know that most of you have heard that, but he has made me made a watchman of me, and I must warn you. This is the point I, I wanted to make. You must be prepared to separate from the physical. Mm -hmm. You must put Yahweh first in all your thoughts now. Go to bed and arise thinking of him, praising and thanking him. Put your heavenly father first in all things. Focus your consciousness on Yahweh. Make him the recipient of all your praise. Thanks and glory now and always. When I realized what I, he was telling me, I wept tears of joy. Put, a fi, put aside all distraction. Enter as deeply as possible into this his peace now. Isaiah 26 and 3. Don't look back. Don't listen to words of discouragement. He is fulfilling his promises to his sons. Just trust in him. Hallelujah. Again, mm -hmm. thank you for time. But these, these things are, are always right now with me. We're in an ever presence of our father. And everything right. that comes before you is needful for you to look at. Mm -hmm. only now, only if you are compelled in such a way that you know it, it's not you thinking. And I'm saying mm -hmm. it like that because I know we, we have that, that, that tendency sometimes to think, well, is it Yahweh or not? No. See, Yahweh, is, he, he is, he is he's solid. And if you would just watch your daily administration, the things that you go through every day, every moment, He's showing you what he would have you to know, to do, and to be in him. Now, as Alfred just said, and the Holy Spirit speaking to him just said, him and Yahweh had, they just have a beautiful time. Carla and, and, mm -hmm. and, and Michael was talking about how, how wonderful it was to be in this state where we are. We are to be lights to one another as well as to the body in understanding that he is now. He's not, we're not going anywhere to fly off somewhere. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, it shall all be changed. And you need to be prepared to know that Yahweh is here. And he's never gone anywhere. That's how you, be, that's how you become perfect in love. Become perfect in love now. Because there's no fear in perfect love. With that I say, hallelujah, and Yahweh be magnified in all his sons. All right. Hallelujah. That's right. All right. Thank you uh, for that. All right. I will be the final speaker um, with the time we have left. My name is Carla Carter once again. I want to first say I thoroughly enjoyed the words of the previous vessels that the Holy Spirit um, expressed the truth through. Um, I don't have much time, so I'll probably go a different way. Um, than initially thought of. Um, so a couple of things, just kind of bring everything together or summarize everything. The first vessel was talking about, um, you know, about a lot of things, but mainly the purpose of Yahweh in a nutshell, about glorifying Yahweh, he brought it down using the physical and, and the spiritual to show forth the correlation of the two to bring it all back into one. Then, of course, the second vessel talked about the same thing. But in both manifestations of it, it was a talking about a round trip, a round trip, a round trip. And it was mentioned about the seed um, and mentioned about Yahweh's spirit manifesting as all these things. And so Yahweh was actually showing me um, the same thing before class actually started. I mean, my husband actually was talking about some similar things, like Alfred and David was, in our household again. I don't know how that's possible, but <laughs> the unity of the spirit is real. And then the thing that really got me, the way that I knew for a fact that I was supposed to express the things that hopefully y'all will allow me to express in a minute, is when David began to speak. That was my initial thought before we even started, before anybody got on Zoom this morning. 
is that if the the words kept coming back, what the founder said, if you just understood the moderation, we could go home. The importance of the moderation, and the moderation he was referring to is not the one that you hear in all the schools now. That came about in the 80s after the founder, after Yahweh took off the body of H.P. Kimmy. The moderation, if you just understand, because what the moderation is talking about is talking about the unity of the spirit. It is eternal life to know that Yahweh is the only true Elohim and Yahshua. And the moderation expresses it and uses scriptures to back it up. But um, just real quick, just to kind of show a couple of things that Yahweh was showing me um, in summation of what both speakers were talking about and the scriptures that were given today were beautiful. I can't wait to chew back on those again. But if you look at the migratory trek, and I really wish me and my aunt that have sit down and go over some of these things with the knowledge that she's been given in the childbirth area. But I'm going to try and correct me if I um, say anything wrong, correct me, because uh, I want to make sure this is said right. So what y'all were showing me about this whole round trip and these different principles having different manifestations, same principles having different manifestations and so forth and so on. And then the last speaker was talking about the kingdom of heaven and we were talking about the round trip, the whole class. When Yahweh showed the vision to Moses. Genesis, the first chapter. It said uh, when he made the trees that the seed was in itself and told the trees to be fruitful and multiply. And then, of course, six day, he made the man and it said that the man had the seed within himself and told him to be fruitful and multiply. Now, in order for an apple tree bear again another apple tree then the first thing that has to happen is the apple has to fall from the tree all the way down past the trunk all the way down to the root of the tree now a tree is threefold you have the roots at the bottom you have the trunk and then you have the leaves and if you look at this pattern here, the migratory pattern, this is like into the leaves of the tree up here in Canaan land, the trunk here in the wilderness, and the roots down here in Egypt. Please try to follow me because I don't have much time. Now, the apple has to fall from the tree up here in Canaan land, fall all the way down to where the roots are. And down here, when the apple falls down on, on the, to the ground where the roots are, it, there's a death that has to take place, and the seed that's within that fruit, the seed that's within that apple has to be buried into that soil, hopefully good soil. It is watered. It's fertilized with the soil. And from the light of the sun, then the tree can actually start bearing, the seed can start bearing roots. You see it starting to sprout up. The trunk sprouts all the way up, all the way back into the leaves of the tree that's good for the healing of the nation, comes all the way back to be an apple tree. That's the whole round trip of an apple tree bearing an, another apple tree, or there's a, 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 another tree born again, so to speak. Same thing with the fall of Adam, so forth and so on, things like that. When we look at the migration of the children of Israel, same thing. You had the seed of Abraham, the seed of Abraham, starting out here in Canaan land, had to come all the way down into Egypt or where the roots are, and they had to be planted down here for a period of time. There had to be a death that was taking place. You had the death decree down there. When it was now, this is when it was time for them to start coming out. Now, you had the death decree down there, right? Now, when you look at the way a man and a woman come together, I'm going to look at that real quick and come back to this migratory pattern. When we have a man and a woman come together, the man has the seed or the sperm, the woman has the substance or the, um, the substance, I'll say the substance, or the ovum or the egg. When they come together, you have the seed and the substance comes together. And when it comes together, it forms what is called a zygote. Z Y G O T E. Okay. Now, a zygote is formed. That's when you have the ovum that is fertilized. When you look up the word fertilized, I want you guys to really please follow me if you can. 
don't get caught up on words and look, in the, look it up later, but just follow the hope because I don't have a lot of time. When you look up what the word fertilize means, fertilize, to fertilize something is to cause an egg, a female animal, or plant to develop a new individual, how so? By introducing male reproductive material. Now keep it in the spirit. I'm going to say it again. To fertilize something means to cause, to develop a new individual by introducing male reproductive material. And so in order for a child to be born, a child to come forth, or for the, the man or woman to reproduce itself, then it has to have a fertilized ovum or an egg, which is called a zygote. And that fertilization, it is causing, a, it's causing to develop a new individual by introducing the seed or the sperm or the male reproductive material. Look at the words, new individual, male reproductive material, so forth and so on, right? And so then, that forms the zygote. Now, what has to happen when the zygote is formed, it has to attach itself to the uterine wall. When that attachment takes place, there is a spotting of blood or a woman's spot. Sometimes she may think it's her period coming on, but it just didn't come all the way on. Oh, my hormones must be messed up or something. Something's going on. But that's actually a spotting or showing of blood once the zygote attaches itself to the uterine wall. Through the process of time and a whole bunch of cell division, that zygote becomes what we call an embryo. That's the whole embryotic phase from the fertilization of the egg or zygote all the way to about the eighth week. That's the, that's the point of embryotic phase. That's the embryotic phase. You have an embryo. Starting at the 10th week of the menstrual cycle, starting the 10th week is when you have the fetus stage. And from the, from the 10th week to the 40th week, you have the fetus stage where the child is being formed in the mother's womb all the way up until birth. If I'm incorrect, please correct me, Felicia. But that's what I was reading. All right, and so if we keep all that in mind, we can look at the children of Israel, how that happened with them, and then we can see how it happens with us. I only have 12 minutes. Let's see if I can finish this up in 12 minutes. So when Yahweh caused those 70 souls to migrate down into Egypt because of the purpose that he had in operation. Those 70 souls had to migrate down into Egypt, the seed of Abraham now. Now, he told them that he was going to surely um, visit them and that he would give them, bring them out of that land that the nation that was going to hold them in bondage, he was going to bring them out, the nation that should hold them in bondage, he was going to judge that nation, but he was going to bring them to a land of milk and honey. He was going to rebirth them. And so when that process happened, of course, you have the death decree back there with Moses, so forth and so on. Things transpired. Moses was sent back down into uh, Egypt. And so that's when you had the seed of Abraham down here. And they were told to take out a lamb. And they were also told to make sure they gathered the substance from the children, um, from the Egyptians. So you have the substance that they had to have. And they had to have the lamb in them. And that was the blood on the door. So that's a zygote attaching itself to the uterus. And so you have to have the show of blood. Now you have to have a certain point where the zygote has to start doing a whole bunch of division, 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 coming on out into the part where you have the fetus stage. The embryotic stage is from the time they put the blood on the door, coming to and through the Red Sea, so they get out here to the wilderness. That's the, all that's the embryonic stage. Now we have to get to the, so from the 10th week to the 40th week. So after the 10th devastating plague, all the way to the 40 years that they have had to wander in this wilderness, that was the whole fetus part. That's the fetus part of the birth, or the fetus part of the child being formed in the mother's womb. So no wonder when they got out here to the wilderness, what did they always holler out to Yahweh? Feed us, feed us. Feed us, because that's the fetus stage. And what did he tell them? You have to wander in this wilderness for 40 years. And so from the 10th devastating plague to the 40th years that they were in Egypt, I mean, in the wilderness, then that's when 
Yahshua, the son of Nun, had to circumcise. This was after they, the whole bunch of shedding off. And if you did not know this, that when a child was being formed in the mother's womb, they shed three different, they shed kit, They have three different kittens. They have to shed kittens. I didn't know that either. <laughs> There's a shedding going on. There's a whole bunch of dying off that has to take place out here. And the same thing happens when the child is being formed in the mother's womb for 40 years or for 40 lunar weeks. Then you have the parting of the Jordan River. It's like the, the, the service being divided for the child to be born by blood and by water. And so, of course, it had to be circumcised out here. Israel had to be circumcised out here because the ones that were born in the wilderness, they had not been circumcised yet. So Yahshua had to step in show of blood. And then they had to, there was a crowning. Yahshua had those crowns, those 33 crowns that he had to take over, that he uh, had to conquer out here. And so, of course, when they come to and through the Jordan River, then, of course, they're born again, or you have such a so-called birth here, where they were back into Canaan land from whence they came. So when the seed fell down, fell or came down, there was a death, a burial, and a resurrection back into a seed. So the seed of Abraham, when he first started in Canaan, was just one seed. Came down and had to multiply, 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 and be formed again, or formed, and then be reborn, and inherit the land that Yahweh promised them in the first place. And it still was called the seed singular of Abraham, like the first speaker talked about. Hope y'all follow, follow me so far. So then we talk about when the Messiah talked about the kingdom of heaven and he talked about the seed that was sown on stony ground and good ground, so forth and so on. Now, when the gospel is being, so this is the being born again part. When the gospel is being preached unto one, Right? That seed has to enter into their mind. He was the Messiah. The true seed that Yahweh promised unto Abram was the Messiah. That's what it says in Galatians. The true seed or the promised seed was the Messiah. So the Messiah has to be planted in your heart and in your mind. And the substance that has to, be in, has to come together with is the faith that what you are being told is true. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So when the seed enters into your heart and mind, if it's good ground, then it mixes with the substance, there is a zygote form. There is a fertilization. And if you read, when an egg, and, when an ovum and a sperm come together and there's fertilization that happens, there's a flash of light that happens. And so, of course, there's a flash of light that goes on in your conscience. But guess what? Still have to be illuminated, though. We don't want that light to be darkened. We want it to be illuminated. And so when you have to get out here to the testing of something ground, of course, when the gospel being preached to you over and over, you're getting those principles. You had so much blood, water, spirit for the death, burial, resurrection, blood, water, spirit for the death, burial, resurrection, principle after principle out here in this wilderness. So much so, there had to be a whole bunch of dying off out here. So the same thing when the gospel is continuously being preached unto you, after the faith comes, then, of course, you have to be led to the Messiah. The, the principles that you're being taught of the blood, water, spirit, for this have to lead you to who the Messiah truly is. Just like out here in the wilderness, Moses had it took 40 years. And then Moses had to reveal to the children of Israel that Yahshua is the angel that Yahweh said would take them over. So Yahshua had to be revealed here at Jordan River before they can go over. And so once all those principles bring to you the realization, because that's what Yahweh said, no man knows the son, but the father, the, the father reveals the son to you. And once you realize who Yash that Yahshua is Yahweh, and that knowledge comes into your mind, and you actually have a profound knowledge of that, then there is a death that takes place, or a, certain, a circumcision that has to happen, or the flesh falls off, and you can be led on into the spiritual reality of the thing. And that's how you are born again. It's the same process. But while you're here, you have to be continuously fed, 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 fed. He continuously rained down manna from heaven for them. They had to continuously follow that cloud, just like the child being in the mother's womb in the, in the uh, fetus state has to continuously get the food from the placenta. And I was even reading that uh, but it's too much to go. I don't, it's too much to explain. I have to do it another time because I only got four minutes. 
And so the same thing with us, we have to continue to be fed, 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 fed. But once they got over here to Canaan land, he no longer had to rain down manna from heaven from them like that. They could just eat from the land. Same principles. And so that's the same thing that has to happen. That's the same journey that we have to take. Same journey. But overall, I, I'm going to go back to John the third chapter, but I, I thoroughly enjoyed class this morning. So many different things that y'all were showing me in the whole process. I hope all that made sense. Um, I didn't have time to break it down like he, you know, like I really um, was looking at it, but it should be enough to get you to look at it and chew on yourself. That's right. All right, John the third chapter, first verse, please. There was John, a three of, of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Yahshua by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from Elohim. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except Elohim be with him. Yahshua answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of Yahweh. Paul. Nicodemus. Paul. Paul, Paul, Paul. Now, where did the last speaker just read and tell you where the kingdom of Yahweh is? Within you. It's right there in you. But except you be born again, you can never see what's in you. That was the whole problem that Eve had. When she was in the man, she was just fine. She had, because it said, in him was life. And that life was the light that lighted every man to come into the world. So, and then it also said, there is therefore no, no condemnation to them that are in Yahshua the Messiah. You have to be in him to receive the life. But once you step out of him, there is no life. It didn't it say over there in Genesis that he had made Adam a living soul? Mm -hmm. It didn't say that, right? I didn't read where it said it made Eve a living soul. It said he made Adam a living soul, and as long as the woman was in him, she was alive. Mm -hmm. Paul said, I was alive without the law once. He was talking about back there in Adam. But sin revived, and I died. And so when the woman was taken out of the man, that's when sin revived, and she died. So you have to get back in the man in order to receive life again. You have to be born again. And except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of Yahweh because it does not come with observation. You will never see inside of you as long as you are continuously looking outside of yourself. But it's impossible not to look outside of yourself when you have a carnal mind. You have to be born again. I'm not talking about your physical body. Your physical body is not what I'm referring to. Because your physical body is not what was born in the first place. That's just the vessel that you took on that you were being formed in your mother's womb. But that's not what was, because how so when a woman um, has a seal born? It's just a body. There's nothing in the body. Because the soul of that body was never born. And so it's not the body in the first place. But just as a child that comes into this world on this side is born innocent initially, but because of the purpose of Yahweh, you have vessels unto honor, vessels unto dishonor. It's so much in it, goodness gracious. Keep reading. I don't have time to get into it. I wish I did. I, we'll try again. Go ahead, read. Fourth verse. Nicodemus says unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born again? Last yeah, said, he was a leader. He was a, he was a ruler of the Jews. This was a ruler now. We just read the first verse. His name was Nicodemus. He was, a, he was the ruler of the Jews. And he asked a question like that. We have some of them dumb questions like that too, don't we? Cause not because we just, because we don't know. And they revealed. But at least he asked. Read. Yahshua answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. Oh, now, it says, except the man be born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of Yahweh. Then he says, real life time to you, except the man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom. And so, of course, you would think, oh, you got to be water baptized. That is not the case. But at the time when he said that, 
they were, uh, John was still water baptizing the Jews and things like that in type and shadow. But there is something called a washing of regeneration by the word. That's what the true being born of water means, being, water, being washed, uh, the washing of regeneration by the word and being baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. That is the only way that somebody can come into it. But keep reading. I don't even have time to even get on that. Go ahead. That time. which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born from above. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canest not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, how can these things be? Yashua answered and oh, said, now, what he's talking about, the wind bloweth where it listeth. And thou hearest the sound thereof, but you don't know where it came from. And when the wind blowing and you hear it, you don't know which direction it came from. So the same thing when somebody's born of the spirit, you don't you can't tell me when you you had this now. Like you can't give me a time after when y'all will reveal something to you. You can't say it was Tuesday at 10 o'clock in the morning is when y'all made me know and understand who I really am. Because spirit doesn't operate in time, man does. But if you are in the day, there is no time in the day. That is the reality of the thing. You can't tell when somebody's born. That's just how it is. It just happens. For real. That's right. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Now, and if I tell you earthly things and you don't believe me, how if I tell you heavenly things, you don't believe me? I'm not going to fix nothing up for you. Read. I ain't got time to read. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the son of man which was in heaven. And as even most the son of man which even the son of man which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. And no man ascended up to heaven except he that came down. Right. Uh, apple, you can't drop an orange down and think it's going to come back up an apple tree. And so in order for you to be born again, it has to be where you came from in the first place. The end was declared from the beginning. Only one came down, only one's going back. And if that be not who you are, then there's no way to make it back. But you have to be told these things so you be mindful of where you're going. Read. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up that whosoever mm -hmm. believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For mm -hmm. Yahweh sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that Declare, believed, why is that? Why is that? Because the world was already condemned from the fall of Adam. When Adam partook of the transgression, willingly died for his bride, that condemnation went upon all men, period. Anybody born after Adam, after the fall of Adam, everybody had that sin or that condemnation or they were sentenced to death from that point forward. So he didn't send Yahshua in the world to condemn the world. The world was already condemned. But why did he send him into the world? Read. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of Yahweh. Because that's and the only way that you can be born again. He that believeth on him is not condemned. He gets rid of that time. So when he got on the cross, he removed the condemnation or that sin that Adam had committed. He fulfilled that one. And then he also came into the world to save mankind from their sins, plural. And so when you believe on him, believe that Yahshua is the Messiah to the glory of Yahweh, then you're not condemned. And then you're in the Messiah. There's therefore now no condemnation to them that are in the truth are in the wisdom, knowledge, and revelation of Yahweh's purpose. 
That's what he's talking about. But if you believe not, then you already condemned. Already. Because you have not believed in the name of the only begotten son of Yahweh. 19th verse. And this is the condemnation. That light is coming to the world. And men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world, not is coming, is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light. What is the light talking about? What is darkness talking about? Ignorance. Yeah. Men rather willful <laughs> ignorance. Willfully ignorant. Don't want to come to it so they won't have to change. They like being the, the way that they are. They like having chaos all the time and lying and cheating and committing all kinds of sins. They'd rather do those things than come to the truth of the matter. Because if you come to the truth of the matter, then you know you're going to have to clean up and change. But men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. 20 verse, mm -hmm. read. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. So if you come to the light or come to the knowledge of the truth, that this is the way you're supposed to walk, walk in it, then their deeds will be reproved. They would have to change. They, won't, they don't want to change. 21st verse, read it. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light. That his deeds may be made. Pause, pause, pause. In him was life. And that life was the light of men. Every man was given a sufficient amount of intelligence to know the difference between right and wrong and to be able to understand and comprehend the truth when it's spoken to them. Yeah. And so, yes, he did light every man to come into the world, but they were not enlightened as of yet. And so, yes, anybody that died after Pentecost, they, did, they were born. They were not born with that condemnation from Adam, but they were born innocent, not dead, but they were also not alive. They were innocent. If you read the Carnal Mind Defined transcript, he talks about that. Mm -hmm. But the light is in them, but they have, you have to come to the light that's in you in order to be made alive. But you have some with the light in them that hate the light that won't come to it. But he that doeth truth he comes to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in Yahweh. And so, yes, the light is in every man. But if it's a vessel unto honor, a vessel unto dishonor, it will be made manifest. And they will come to that light that is in them or that understanding that is in them or the kingdom of heaven that is right there in them if they are a vessel unto honor. But if not, they will hate that light that's in, and it will be made darkness unto them. Keep reading. After these, things, after these mm -hmm. things came Joshua and his disciples into the land of Judea, and there he tarried with them and baptized. And John mm -hmm. was also baptizing in Enon near to Salem, because there was much water there. And they came and were baptized. For John was not yet cast into prison. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all come to him. Paul, John and Paul, Paul, Paul. See, this is why Yahshua said what he said. I have greater witness than that of John. Because even though John bore witness of them, they still didn't realize that he was the Messiah, even though John's disciples didn't even realize it. They didn't even believe what John said, evidently. Because it had not been made, they weren't conscious of it yet. They could not have known. Because had they known or believed, they would not have crucified him. But it still had to be told them who he was. And so then he said, look, what he said, read. John answered and said, a man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. That's right, read. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Messiah, but that I am sent before him. Mm -hmm. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, 
which standeth and heareth him rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This, my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. He heard it. Mm -hmm. He must increase, but I must decrease. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what mm -hmm. he had seen and heard, that he testified. And no man receiveth his testimony. Pause, he, pause, 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 pause. Now remember in Matthew eleven twenty seven, he said, no man knows the son but the father. Mm -hmm. And no man knows the father except the son. And he, to whomever the son will reveal the father. Now I thought you just said no man knew. Now he's saying, and what he had seen and heard that he testified and no man received his testimony. Mm -hmm. Read the next verse. He that hath received his testimony hath certified that he is truly of Elohim. Paul, he that's how, that you, have, you have to be born again to receive it. You cannot be a man right. and receive anything. And that's what right. he had seen and heard that he that he testified and no man receiveth his testimony. He that has received his testimony. Wait a minute. No man received his testimony. So whoever did receive his testimony could not have been a man. You have to be born again. You exactly. have to know That's and right. understand you are not a man or a woman in this thing. You are Yahweh manifested in the body. You are the same one that descended in order to act in. That's who you are. And you have to be made manifest. Until then, you cannot receive the kingdom of heaven. And until then, you will never see the kingdom of heaven that is right there in you. No man can receive the things of Yahweh. Yahweh does not give it. Only the fear of Yahweh can receive the things of Yahweh. And if that be not who you are, it is impossible for you to receive it. That is the born again. That is the round trip. Only one came down and manifested and multiplied to become everything you see and don't see. And everything that you see and don't see is the same thing that has to go back the same way it came down. It has to come right back up. So if one came down, you have to be in the body of the one that came down in order to go back up. And that's not a physical body. It was that's never right. a physical body to begin with. The moderator tells you. And remember, why he said remember? Because you were told already. First part of the moderation told you everything he said, but he tells you, remember what you just heard. Now remember, Yahweh in pure spirit. As the Father, Yahweh, taking on shape and form right, right there within himself as the Word of Son, is known as Elohim. And Yahweh manifested in a physical body as the Savior of the world. It's just one spirit. Yahweh and his two manifestations, just one spirit. That's if you right. could understand that, if you just understood it, not repeat it, but if you just understood it, you can go home. But until you understand it, you will not be able to see the kingdom of heaven. Keep reading. For he whom Yahweh hath sent speaketh the words of Yahweh. For Yahweh giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. The father loveth the son and hath given all things into his hand. He that mm -hmm. believeth on the son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of Yahweh abided on him. Hallelujah. That's all I got on having time for anything else. But I thoroughly enjoyed class this morning. If you actually go back and listen to the whole thing and see that the speaker that was speaking through all three vessels was just saying all of the same thing and bringing it all back together and calling out all the scriptures that manifested his purpose from start to finish and truly showed you the supernal nature of Yahweh, it has been a beautiful class, as all the rest of them have been. And it's the unit, mm -hmm. when I tell you, the unity of the Spirit is amazing, and the unity of the Spirit is real. We can have conversations in our household and not tell anybody else and same scriptures that we were looking for, scriptures that confirm, all kind of things. Just I'm talking about, It's so great to be here. That's right. I don't yes, ever want to come down. And I don't want to take nothing. Up. I, don't, I ain't coming down for nothing. I don't want to. I want to stay on the housetop. 
So I, I, I'm, I'm like, oh, let's, let's go. Let's go. But I hope That's you got right. something out of what was said today. And I thank you. And may Yahweh bless us all. Have a good one. Hallelujah. That concludes class for today. Are there any questions or comments or announcements or anything like that that anybody wants to um, ask or make? Dr. Boston couldn't be on today. He um had to go to the hospital yesterday morning. I think to the um yesterday yesterday morning. Um he had a another possible heart attack, so he's in the hospital right now. He's fine, he's doing just oh, fine. Man. Just those uh these bodies we have to deal with. Um, things like that. He's fine, um, but he wasn't able to be with us this morning because he's in the hospital trying to get some medications adjusted and things like that so he can kind of start feeling a little bit better than he's been feeling. But of course, he sends all his love and things like that to everybody. Are there any... Can I check you too? You want me to check it? Oh, let's see. This might be... Any questions or comments from anybody on Zoom while I'm checking you too? Well, that concludes class. Um, again, our announcements are the same. We have class every Sunday from noon, I mean, from 10 a.m. to noon Central Time. We do stream live on Zoom. If you want to join us live on any of our Zoom classes, you can always email us at meridiansoul at gmail.com or idmrmeridianms at gmail.com. I think we did have someone email us or send us a um, request on the website, and I sent, I responded, I think, yesterday or this yesterday with that um, information to join us live on Zoom. And then, of course, um, our website is soulfood.org, S-O-H-L-F-O-O-D.org. Um, and then, of course, our event is coming up June 20, 20th through 23rd, 2024, Gulfport, Mississippi. It's Mississippi Soul Food Gathering. It's free to register. Um, and then, of course, you have to go online to actually register for free and then also to get the information to book your or reserve, reserve your rooms for the hotels and things like that. All the information is online on our website and click on the events tab to register for free and get all the other information. All right, if nothing else, we'll conclude with the doxology, taking the last two verses of the book of Jude. All right, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. So the only wise Elohim our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign. The long glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever, let everybody say hallelujah. 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 All right. Sound like my... All right, y'all um, have a wonderful day. Uh, we'll hope and y'all jump right back on.